multiplication. We did adding, we did subtracting, that's the multiplication, okay? Now you have to know your basic multiplication table. And I'm gonna put that on my website, and you gotta go through and fill it out, okay? Uh, you should know this stuff. You gotta know how to multiply two numbers together, two single numbers together at least, okay? But, so let's take a little bit higher and do bigger numbers, okay? Let's go 25 times 12. Now, the way you do this is you go with the first number for the one to your right, okay? So 2 times 5 is 0, 1 comes up. 2 times 2 is 4, plus 1 is 5. Now, when you go to the next digit, you got to compensate for this guy. So you add a 0 here for this, and you come up here. Two times, uh, 1 times 5 is 5, 1 times 2 is 2, okay? So what you have here is 0, 0, 1 comes up. 25 times 12 is 300. Okay, let's do a bigger number. 3, 5, 7 times 1, 3, 1. Actually, let's change this to a zero. That way you know how to deal with zeros. 1 times 7, 7. 1 times 5, 5. 1 times 3, 3. What you do here is, when you're about to multiply this, you gotta compensate for this guy, because it's one digit over. You add your zero, and then what you're gonna do is multiply this, these numbers out. Zero, zero, zero. Zero times all these becomes zero. So you got zero, zero, zero. Okay? Straightforward. Then you go back to the one. Now, one is two digits away from here. So you gotta add two zeros down here. And then, you multiply out. One times seven, one times five, one times three, it's all the same thing. So it becomes three, five, seven. Now what you do is, you, you've lined up your numbers and then you add them up. This becomes seven, five, seven plus three is 10. You carry the one up, one, zero, five is six, and then you have a three down here. So your answer, 357 times 101, is three, six, zero, five, seven. Now, if they add decimals to these numbers, this is much simpler than adding or subtracting because you don't have to line up your decimals. All you do, for example, let's say this was 3.57 and this was 10.1. So all you do at the end, you count up the number of decimals you have. You got one, two here and one here, so that's three decimal places. You start from here and you go one, two, three. So 3.51 times 10.1 is 36.057. Simple as that. We've done adding, we've done subtracting, we've done multiplication. Now we're gonna do division. Okay, so we've done adding, subtracting, we've done multiplication. What we're gonna do, I'm gonna show you is how to do uh, long division, okay, by hand. You're, the odds are you're probably not gonna use it that much, but uh, it's good to know how to do it. So come on. Let's say you wanna divide 257 by 12, okay? What you would, what I'm gonna show you how to do is break these down to their prime numbers and cancel things off and reduce it that way. But right now, we're gonna do it through long division, okay? That's the long division symbol with the 12 up here and 257 inside. So this basically means 257 divided by 12. Now, how many times does 12 go into two? Well, it doesn't. So what you do, you move on to the next number. How many times does 12 Go into 25. Well, it goes into it twice. So what you do, you put the two up here. Now line up your numbers so you know where you are. It's all about order, okay? Two times two is four. Two times one is two. Four minus five is one. Two minus two is zero. Okay? So what you got now is, you got a one down here. 12 doesn't go into one. So what you gotta do is bring down the seven. 12 goes into 17 once. So you put a one up here, line it up with the seven. So this becomes 12. And you're subtracting these. So two minus seven is five. One minus one is zero, okay? Now 12 doesn't go into five. So there's two ways you can express this. Right now you can say 257 divided by 12 is equal to 21 and by twelfths. Okay? So you reduce this fraction into this number. 
But what you could do is continue on and get a decimal number out of this. So the way you do this is, as soon as you get to the last number and you can't continue on anymore, you put a decimal point here. As soon as you put a decimal point here, you can borrow as many zeros as you want. So what you could do is, add a zero down here. Now you ask yourself, how many times does 12 go into 50? Well, 12 goes into 20, 25 twice. So if you multiply 24 by 2, you're going to get 48. So 12 goes into 50 four times. 4 times 12 is going to be 48. Okay? Then you've got to subtract these. 8 doesn't go into 0, so you borrow 1 from here. This becomes a 4. That's a 10, so that's 2. Now 12 doesn't go into 2. So what you can do is borrow another 0 because you put your decimal place in. You borrow another 0. How many times does 12 go into 20? Once. So this becomes 12, and you put your 1 up there. 12 minus 20 is 8. Now 12 doesn't go into 8 anymore, and you can continue this. You can continue to add on zeros, and continue to take out the decimal place further. Now the odds are you don't have to do it, okay? So just remember how to do this, because it uses addition, subtraction, and multiplication. Okay? We'll talk later.